Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this glorious Mother's Day weekend in beautiful Tlacopaki. And for the moms out there, these flowers are for you, generously bought, brought to you by our hardworking master gardeners that make Tlacopaki absolutely shine. I'm Ken Rowe, the owner of Rowe Gallery. Well, actually, we all own Rowe Gallery. Our staff are friends, Monica, my wife, and this is Snickle Fritz. He's the boss. I'll let him go. So, back to the flowers. Just as these blossoms have opened, so has Tlacopaki. As of yeah. yesterday, we're open. The merchants are well trained with the CDC standards for health guidance. We have our, our masks ready. <laughs> we have hand sanitizer ready. And who would have ever thought I would be saying, I know how to sterilize a credit card. And I do now. So, as I said before, we're learning a lot as we go with this. You guys have made this live stream such an amazing success by chiming in. And I'll apologize in advance because I, we couldn't get to all the questions last weekend, which we are definitely today with our guest, Kim Corey, <laughs> who's the star of the show today. And also today, we're going to be doing a follow-up on the progress I've made on my mountain lion piece. And a great question from Lisa and Ray how to wax and clean your bronze. So I'm going to show you how to do that, and we're going to wrap up with a segue into our artist for next week. So here we go. Kim Corey, here you are. Good morning. Thank you. Hi, Kim. Thank you. And I'm going to get my list of questions. Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. So um, I have to first say, though, we have gotten so much response on your rapid transit. We have okay. to revisit this because okay. I'm going to put this down. So many people have chimed in and said, show us more of this piece. And I want people to see the amazing work that Kim Corey and Eric Peterson have done to make this piece come to life in, bron life in bronze. And as an artist, I can say that to me, this is a dream come true. When you see a piece that comes from clay to this, it really has come to life. Yeah, and it's you have to be. Yeah, you have to be absolutely thrilled with this. Uh, I am. <laughs> yeah. I am. And I love how the bronze glows through the shell and the the snail body and and even the frog. Yeah. yeah. Well, so you can a, tell it's bronze and yet it has color. Yeah. Well, That's it's a spectacular great. piece, and I applaud you for that. Thank so, you, Cam. <laughs> and it's available. It's on our website our brand new website, so please go to that for sure and look at all these pieces that we have along with our other artists. So, let's get to the questions. Well, I guess what comes to mind first is how many years you've been sculpting? Well, I started sculpting in the early 80s mm -hmm. when I took a job at a fine art foundry here in Sedona. And I learned the process and I decided to do a couple for myself. I had been doing several different kinds of art, and when I moved to Sedona, I got a job there at the foundry and learned all the techniques. And then I did two bronzes, and I asked somebody here in Tlacopaki, who's no longer here, if they would take my sculptures. And she said, well, we usually don't take only two pieces, but okay, we'll give it a try. And the next day, one sold. So. Terrific. I thought it must be what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> well, how many years ago was that? That was that was in the 80s. Really? Yeah. So 30 some odd years ago. Yeah. And, and here in Sedona the whole time. Right. I've been here 44 years now. Oh, good for you. <laughs> oh, we're glad to have your Sedona sister to us. Oh, we'll thank you. You and Susan Cleaver, I have to say. Oh, yeah. Are the two Sedona sisters. So. Great. So anyway... <laughs> The animals that you sculpt, are they animals that you've personally got to know? Well, some of them yeah. are. Uh, so I, I've gotten to know some of the mice and frogs. And uh, I even brought one of my little models today. Oh, I heard and we have a special the, guest. Yeah. Lila, correct? Yeah, Lila. Yeah. The gray tree frog. <laughs> so what... what um, stories stand out in your mind of the animals you've worked with that really inspire you and that you you brought into your pieces well uh 
couple of my favorites are, I usually buy mice at the pet store when I'm doing mice. And they're called fancy mice. Um, but I, I brought um, a couple home and thought they were both female, was told they were both female, but then one day a friend of mine was in the studio and he said, oh, I see your mouse had babies. And I'm like, what? And there were 10 little pink babies in there. That is what inspired me to do Shelter, the mother with the babies, and it's a good one for Mother's Day. Um, she's got four babies with her in the rain, hiding under a leaf. Um, but also with those mice, my favorite was champagne colored. I, I found homes for six of them, then I had four, and my favorite was champagne colored. And she somehow figured out how to get out of the cage by unscrewing a cap. So people think mice are dumb maybe, but this one was very smart. She would take the cap off at night and I would come out and I'd say, did I forget to put that on again? And then one day I saw her working it. So one time I came out, she, was, she had gotten out of the cage. No, none of the others did, just her. And so I went, opened the closet to get, I have a heart trap, and she was sitting on the shelf looking at me. So <laughs> I picked her up and put her back in the cage, and then I, I taped the cap on so she couldn't get out anymore. But she was really smart, I'm telling you. She actually unscrewed a cap to yeah, get out. Yeah, somehow she unscrewed Isn't this Isn't that cap. amazing? It, is, it was amazing. So do you have a favorite animal? I mean, I'm, I'm asked that quite often. I don't have an answer to that, but do you? Well, I, I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but I, I'm kind of um, partial to frogs. I think it started when I was a child, and I would go to visit my aunt at her summer home, and she had a frog pond. And while the other kids were running off to the pool, I was sitting by the frog pond waiting for the bullfrogs to pop their heads up. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, I just, I've had a fascination for them. They're unlike any other. Um, and so... Well, that's a perfect segue for our special guest. Okay. Lila. <laughs> Lila was the yeah. model for spring. This piece. Ken and Kim, we have a couple people coming in. Just saying good morning. We have the Greers again, Lorna. Oh, yes. And Warren from Costa Mesa. Warren, we're getting to your question. It's next. Hi, Warren okay, and great. Lorna. <laughs> uh, Joan Amatuzio just commenting on how beautiful the pieces are. Oh, oh thank you Joel so much. Joel Peterson, uh, partial to frogs, question mark. <laughs> 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 so awesome, awesome comments. Whoops. Okay. She's a little feisty. I better put her in here. There you go. So can you see, Lee? Ah. Oh, no. oh, got her. <laughs> I said, I hope she doesn't escape, but if she does, there are, are gray tree frogs in Sedona, and there's a creek right here, so yeah. she wouldn't have a terrible life. But anyway, at home, she's in a big terrarium, um, so she has a good life. I had three of them, but and the way I got them was sort of amazing. I... Um, I wanted to do gray tree frogs, and I wanted to do an iris because I have an iris garden, and every every year the iris garden comes up, and I'm like, I've got to sculpt an iris. So then I thought I'd have gray tree frogs climbing the stalk because they live in Sedona. And so I was up in Flagstaff, and I walked by Petco, and in the window there was a sign, gray tree frogs. Somebody was surrendering them. They didn't, uh, they didn't want to keep them anymore. And I said, oh my God, that's amazing. Well, I can't get in here. <laughs> and um, so, so I went in and they, they said, yeah, somebody wants us to find homes for three gray tree frogs. They're never in pet stores. They just aren't in pet stores. So I thought, oh my God. I don't, I don't think I want to have frogs again. 
to take care of frogs again. But he opened the lid to show me. I was going to take one, and all three were looking at me. And I said, OK, I'll take all three. So I've had three. And um, Lila's the only one that's still alive. <laughs> so Warren and Lorna, here's your question from last week. Your work seems to be smiling, smiling or exuding happiness. Is this the way you embody yourself in your work? I think that's a great question. Well, I suppose it is. I, um, I like to sculpt animals uh, doing what they love, like eating, sleeping, all the instinctive things that animals do, or playing. And um, so since all those things are happy things, I guess I do. Now, like the road runners falling asleep, they're seeking shelter from the rain, and Al's doing what they, they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then these guys are playing, and, they, and tree frogs do this. They climb stalks, they like to climb up, so, so this is, and, and uh, so, yeah, I guess you would say yes. I'm glad they, they look like they're smiling because then maybe they make you smile. Yeah, true. <laughs> and you've done several large pieces over the years, commissions and otherwise, and your own ideas. And I think you've had 15 public installations. Yeah, can't believe it. And some of these it. larger pieces, Amore, which we'll show on camera, went to how many different homes throughout the country? Amore, I think it's five or six now. Yeah, yeah. so it was really well received. And it's still available. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. But very popular. Yeah, it was popular. popular. It has okay. been popular, yes. So another question we had is back to your Roadrunner from last week. We had a client inquire about the patina that you want to uh, do on your Roadrunner. So if you don't right. mind explaining that. Yeah, I brought um, four birds today because they all live in Arizona. Um, well, the fourth one just barely started. This is a canyon wren. Um, they all live in Arizona, and the Roadrunner, which is one of the quirkiest birds, I discovered that something I didn't know is that their feathers have an iridescent green to them. So I'm going to try and put a little bit of iridescent green over the brown to show that. So they should look like feathers for sure. Um, do you have and a photo I, that shows that, Kim? I have. Now, I dripped water from Lila's cage on this, but you can kind of see what a road runner looks like. And this is their head, which is amazing. So I can't wait to put the red and blue on the face to make it going to make it pop. Um, the, the cactus, of course, will be green. Um, these buds, cactus buds, will be a golden bronze color, maybe with a little transparent yellow over them. And the lizard, I'll, I'm sure I'll do patterns on the lizard because I love to do that. Because they have really amazing patterns. So, um, yeah, that's about it. So will the barred markings on the feathers on the roadrunner look somewhat like the owl here, Moonlight? Well, maybe a little bit, but I know I'll have Eric do the, the brown with the iridescent green. And then knowing me, I'll go and put the white on the edges of all the feathers. That's how I am. So it would be just a little bit of white to give that um, variegated look. So. Well, thank you, Kim. Welcome. If there's any questions I've forgotten, if we have any questions coming in, please let us know. But Kim, you are a, a dear to us. We love having you in our gallery. Um, your work shows it, obviously, by the comments we're getting. It's, it brings joy to people's lives. It makes them smile. And you're, you're succeeding at what you're doing by bringing that to the audience that you have. Your work is unlike anything I've ever seen with the thank detail <laughs> and the patinas and the thought that goes into it. So That's thank what I you so much. For. We'll have you back. Oh, can I just say one please, more thing? Please, please, all you want. I'm thinking of doing this in a large oh, size. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I, I just wanted to mention it. But um, I, think, I think I'll do it 
maybe almost two feet from here to the end of the head. Okay. Um, but I think it would just look absolutely amazing to do that shell big. Yes, it would. I think it would really stand out, and it could go outside or inside. So, so will, will we that. have maybe dimensions later this week that we can post on our website? And what we'll do, I believe, is we'll do a Photoshop of you standing next to the enlarged version so people can see how big it is going to be. And okay. then as soon as you get a bid from the foundry, we'll put a price up there for you. Okay. So it will be available. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yep, I, I would love to do that. It's kind of one of my favorite things to do, Good. little creatures like this. Well, thank you, Kim, again. We'll have you back. Okay. And uh, it's been a we pleasure. Love you. So, okay, love you so too. we're going to go over here. Thanks, you guys. To uh, the great question that we had in terms of how to clean, wax, and polish your bronze. So these are the only tools that are required, simple hobby, sh I mean, uh, hardware store materials, Johnson's Paste Wax. So what we do is we take these, these paint brushes, and what you want to be careful of is this, this metal ferrule will actually scratch the bronze if it hits it. So we just take some tape. And you can easily do this at home. And let me say, by the way, um, of all the indoor pieces I have owned, I've never had to wax one. Now, exterior is a different story. But if you want to do it, you're not going to hurt anything if you want to do this to your piece that you've had indoors. So that's covered. And this ferrule is covered. So Johnson's Paste Wax, again, any hardware store has it. Very thin in viscosity. So very sparingly, that's enough to do probably at least half of this piece. And you, you can barely see it because it goes liquid very quickly. And then you're just going to brush it on the piece. And you can see it kind of gets a little wet looking because that's the, the wax liquefying. Work it into the recesses. Don't clog up. If you see it leaving a residue behind, like it clogs up in some of the recesses, you've got too much on your brush. Ken, we've got uh, just comments coming in. I just want to update you. Uh, the Good. Aronson's coming in as you're oh, yes. showing this. Yeah, yeah this is uh, it. From Coconut Creek, of course. Yeah, as you Florida. Know, a number of people coming in. Sylvia, uh, Joel Peterson. Lorna again, and just a lot of folks weighing in. Perfect, thank That's you. That's good timing on you exhibiting this, showing this. So. Yeah, and so this does apply to, like, if you want to do an exterior piece. So one thing I skipped is cleaning it, and it's soft brush, nothing on it, right? So we'll go to the other side, and let's say it's dusty. You just work that into the recesses and brush all the dust. You can use canned air. You can use anything you want. So that's very, very clean. That way the wax doesn't trap any, any dust or particles in the recesses. So we're going we're gonna to let this dry probably only about a half hour. Then it, it's just like waxing your car, basically. You take a nice soft terry cloth rag. And I've already waxed this side and it's dry. You see it's dull. I'm going to set it down right here. Lightly polish it. And see how it starts to shine? Ken, we also have Michael Popit coming in from, oh, from cold and windy West, Westminster, <laughs> Mass. I don't want to make you homesick. So. <laughs> I don't want to make you homesick. But look at short sleeves, birds singing, beautiful courtyards. you got to come and see us. We're missing you guys. All right, so here we go. It's all waxed and polished. And there you go. It's just that easy. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call in terms of how to do this. Lisa, I hope that answers your question. Uh, oh, well, I will say that the green that you see on patinas is called cupric nitrate. It's a liquid copper. And so uh, a lot of times by waxing, it will subdue that green quite a bit, but it will come back to the surface over time because it's continually oxidizing on that surface. So, but I like that. I like the green to oxidize and look more antiqued as it goes. So now we're going to go to the progress I've made on vantage point 
my life-size lion. Let me put this over here. And Ken, we have Bill Bassett coming in, just commenting on how much he enjoyed the interview that you just oh, did good. With, with Kim. Good. And Lisa did comment into great timing on the demonstration of the cleaning and polishing. Good. So yeah, and I hope you got your care viewing. package, Lisa. Okay, so now again, I have to say this. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I can't stop myself. Every week I start doing this and think, okay, I'll put about 30, 40 hours in it. And 60 hours later, I'm still having fun and I can't stop. So now we're probably up to, we're over 400 hours in this. Uh, it doesn't feel like it, but people have always asked me to keep track, so, so I am. And probably another 60 pounds of clay mainly back here on the hind quarters. And this rolls, by the way, <laughs> that gasp you heard was my wife. I made this on a rolling dolly so we can, we can roll this thing around. So it's okay, it won't fall. Okay, so I've done more refinements on the hind quarters and you can't see because the lighting is getting kind of iffy, but perfect timing with the light on that face I always tell Monica, my wife, the difference between success and failure on a piece this big can be the smallest amount of clay. And here's a good example. Lee, if you can zoom in right here, this, this little piece of clay right there has made that look so much more alive. Those little subtleties as I go through this whole piece and refine it are going to add up to what I hope brings this mountain lion to life. So keep, I'll keep you posted next week. We'll catch up on this again. And since we're here, I have to say Red Rock TV, that's why we are here. They're phenomenal to work with. We're thrilled to have them. And uh, my, I applaud you guys. So thank you. Now, if you can, Lisa also says, got the care package. Oh, good. So good, she good. did receive. And Ruth Gordon, good morning from ah, Pensacola, yeah. Florida. Yeah, so. perfect. Okay, so this leads us to next week's artist. You guys have got to watch this. Um, he has been sculpting probably about 10 years or so. Not only does he sculpt, he does these amazing patinas. So next week, Eric Peterson is going to be our guest artist. And he, these are his two pieces. He's going to patina this piece from start to finish right before your eyes. So you have to see this. It's very dramatic with chemicals and torches, heat. And Eric is a great showman. So please stay tuned for next week. We look forward to seeing you. Lee, if we can have that segment on him. And Randy, you have another question? Quick question from Sylvia. Um, how many rapid transits are available? Yes, Kim, how many Kim. rapid transits? And I think seven are spoken for. So good. Yeah. Good question. So on that note, we'll leave you guys from paradise. Please come and see us. Make this place smile with your faces. We'd love to see you again. Be spontaneous and come and visit. Thank you very much. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>